Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial on how to put a logo on a glass. In the previous tutorial, it was kind of like an introduction to it. Uh, it was a simple way of putting a logo on a glass so that you just use one shader. This is a more complicated and more accurate way of creating a shader. So if you haven't seen the previous tutorial, I highly recommend that you watch it. Uh, this is going to involve more than one shader connect mix together. So just keep that in mind that this is a little bit more complicated. All right. So in the previous tutorial, if we take a look at the hypershade, we're going to be working in here. We have an AI standard. I'm going to go ahead and close all this because I don't need this information. And I'm going to right click and graph on uh, the network. So we have a let's just kind of separate this here. So we have a, uh, a shader that is connected to the base color and then we also have one that's connected to the transmission which so it gives us this type of effect okay this time though we're going to be using what's called an ai mix shader so by the way this glass is already uv mapped if you're following along make sure that you watch the previous tutorial to kind of get an idea of how to uv map all right let's go ahead and create an ai mix so hit tab on your keyboard and type in ai mix shader and now we have an AI mix shader. And the way it works is that I'm actually going to just create new shaders just because this can get a little messy. So I'm going to start off from scratch. I'm going to create an AI standard. Sorry about that. Standard surface. And I'm going to go to presets. And I'm going to go to glass and replace. So this is going to be a regular glass shader. If we want to see what that looks like, let's go ahead and assign. Ding. Arnold. There we go. So last time we messed around a little bit with the roughness, if you wanted to increase the roughness. And I also messed around with the IOR. So if you guys are interested in messing around with the IOR, you're more than welcome to, which is the index of refraction. All right, so now that we have that, I'm gonna stop this. Let's label things because we wanna make sure we're on the same page. So let's go and label this glass. We're gonna do this again, AI standard. This one is going to be our logo. Okay, and it's getting a little busy in here. So let's do this. I'm gonna go here to my texturing tab. Again, this is another Arnold uh, tutorial that I did for you guys earlier. So feel free to uh, use that as reference to how to create your own workspace. Okay, so let's grab these three shaders here and let's click on this button right here, which is gonna lay out everything for us. So I'm going to move things around, grab these, move it here. Cool. All right, so this is my logo. And maybe just close this now because I really don't need it. Okay, cool. Um, this is my logo. Let's go ahead and plug it on here and let's press play. And you can see it's a regular one. So we're going to go to color. Make sure you're on base. Color, clink, file, folder. And let's grab the glass color two. Now, if you remember last time, um, the glass color too, and I'm going to open it up in Photoshop is the one that has no background and the channels are basically clear. So this is a transparent background. So it has, um, alpha maps already attached to it. So, which is great because what we need to do is let's, um, move things around again. Let's collapse some of this. I'm going to press two. So two is just going to kind of collapse things, uh, three, four. So we need four for the logo but I'm collapsing everything else. All right, so here's the file. This is the file we just attached and we need to attach it is to the transparency, not the, not the transmission because the glass is gonna be our transmission. What we want is the opacity. So let's open up the opacity. So sometimes you may need to zoom in and grab the little plus sign. And somehow I made this connection, which is crazy to me. Um, and we're gonna connect our alpha to R G and B press play. And there you go. We have my logo or the logo just kind of hanging out at the top and the whole, the rest of it is transparent, which is great. Let's stop this from rendering. All right. So let's use our mix shader. We're going to grab our out color and connect it to shader one. And then we're going to grab the out color of our logo and connect it to shader two. And we have to assign it the mix shader into our cup. So you can middle mouse and drag it. And let's see what we get. So now we're getting a mix, 50% mix of the glass and the logo. So if I scroll to the left, 
you'll see that the glass shader is 100%. And if I scroll to the right, the logo is now in uh, 100%. So let's go back to 0.5 and we need to drive this using a alpha map. So we already have one actually. Um, we already have it with our logo. So let's grab it out alpha, drag this over to mix and connect it. And there we go. We get the effect right away. So that is a more complicated but more accurate way of creating a logo on your glass. Let's click on this and click on this little guy right here, which is going to help us kind of organize it a little bit more. And let's get a closer look. So right now we have two shaders. The glass is in shader one. The logo is in shader two and the file that we created that has an alpha map attached to it is driving the mix. Now, do we need this opacity? The answer is no. Let's go to Maya classic and let's bring back Arnold renderer here. There it is. Maybe zoom in a little bit more. There we go. And that is another way of creating a Arnold standard surface. And just to show you a little bit more, let's close this. Why don't we give it a little bit of a bump map? So let's go into Photoshop. This is our uh, color and it also drives our mix. So I'm going to create a new one, file, save as, and this is going to be called my bump. So anything light rises and anything dark falls. So we need to make sure we have a 50% neutral. So let's grab our black. We want our, our HSB, which is hue saturation. And I think it's brightness, change it to 50%, which means that it's going to be a 50% neutral. And let's fill this in. Let's reveal this and fill it in. There we go. And if we want this, to actually rise or fall, we need to do a control E with these two layers, which is going to merge them into one. I'm going to double click on this, go to color overlay and choose a little bit of a brighter gray, something like this, right? So what it's going to tell the shader is that this is neutral and this should rise a little bit. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to save again. So let's get rid of this because I don't need my UVs. Double check my channels, save glass BMP. Now you may be asking which glass shader should we put it on? Should we put it in the uh, glass, the logo or the mix? Well, the mix doesn't really have a bump map. So we'll back and the logo is uh, basically being controlled by the mix. So we probably want to try the glass. Let's graph the network, grab the um, glass shader. We're going to go down to geometry. Here's a bump map. Click on this file, click on the bump value, click on the little folder and let's see what that looks like. So right away you can see that, and I need to get closer. It's starting to rise a little bit, which is awesome, which is exactly what we want. So let's get closer still. So you can see that the objects actually being pulled up a little bit which is helpful because that means that I can make the logo look like it's standing out a little bit from the glass. So it's not perfectly flat and flush that it's actually almost like stuck on, which is awesome. All right. That was a quick tutorial on how to use AI mix and mix two shaders together. One's procedural, which is the glass. And then of course there's the logo and then you, how you can actually make it look like a logo on the glass and make it rise a little bit. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions, please feel free to share this with anybody that you think would appreciate, uh, something like this. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave a message below and you can always uh, sign up for my newsletter at academicphoenixplus.com. So thank you everybody for all of your support and I will see you next time.